Good morning and welcome to my backyard. You know, when the early church faced discrimination, they changed the system and they changed it by focusing on changed hearts. Discrimination and prejudice were absolutely everywhere in the first century. Romans thought that they were better than everybody else because they had conquered everyone. Greeks thought that they were better than everybody else and called them all barbarians because they thought their culture was superior. Egyptians thought that they were better than everybody else uh, because they thought of themselves as the oldest people in the world. And of course, Jewish people thought of themselves as better and called everybody else Gentiles. All of this prejudice made its way into the church. As, a, as the church grew and expanded, uh, they also encountered these cultural schisms. The one that they really faced very early on was a div division between Greek-speaking cultural Jews and uh, Aramaic-speaking traditional Jewish people. There is a divide between them, and it showed itself up uh, in the very first days of the church, when Greek-speaking Jewish people accused uh, uh, Aramaic-speaking Jewish people of favoritism. And the apostles dealt with it in a really unique and interesting way. Uh, they began by telling the entire congregation to solve the problem. They didn't jump in and fix it. They didn't rescue people. Rather, they empowered people. Uh, giving them the responsibility to, to address the issue. But they also put two parameters in place. They said the people who would be resolving this issue and would be uh, uh, changing the system moving forward, that they had to be people who were competent and wise, and they also had to have the Holy Spirit. They had to have the Holy Spirit. Uh, another way of saying that is that their hearts had to be in tune with God's will. Right? They had to be people with transformed hearts. This is not new uh, in the Bible. Throughout the Bible, and particularly in the Old Testament, we hear again and again uh, that people who, had, who did administrative work had the Holy Spirit. They were in tune with what God had to say. You know, all work, all work is spiritual work. And, this, and in this day and age right now, uh, where we're talking so openly and having these honest conversations about racism and prejudice, it's good to keep in mind you know, that we need to change systems. Systems need to change. But there is also spiritual work happening here. This is heart work. This is people work. And what does the Holy Spirit have to do here? Well, it's so important to keep in mind that every time we deal with people, that every time we serve a person, we are in fact serving a person. Every time we engage with someone, we're not only meeting a material need, we're not only uh, giving something over, selling a product as it were, but we're all also dealing a person with a person. And so we are also giving dignity, giving respect, giving a sense of worth. Systems need to change, but beyond that, hearts also need to change. We need to be highly mindful of the fact that every time we interact with a person, we're interacting with a human being, someone made in God's image, someone for whom Jesus Christ gave his life, somebody whom Jesus thinks of as having worth and as having dignity, uh, somebody worth the utmost respect, and we need to then treat all people with dignity and respect. Without that, system change isn't enough. Without dignity and respect and value, system change can't be enough. And so the apostles, the, very, the first century church, as they dealt with, century, with uh, discrimination in their midst, they made sure that they had people in place who were guided by the Holy Spirit, who had humanity at the very forefront of the work that they did. And so you and I, as we engage prejudice here uh, in our world, in our culture, in our society, I need to be mindful of this as well, that systems need to change, that protocols need to be put in place, uh, that we need to approach uh, these realities in new ways. 
But foundationally, we need to approach them with changed hearts. We need to bring respect, dignity, and worth to all interactions, uh, to every, every time we meet with a person, that their humanity uh, is at the forefront uh, of our engagement. All right, we're going to go to prayer now. Uh, and as we pray, we will pray as we have been, which I will give time for silence. And then you can also uh, pray into that silence. Uh, I will say, Lord, in your mercy, and you can close, respond with, hear our prayer. Uh, and then we will close with the Lord's Prayer. God, we thank you for this beautiful day. Uh, we thank you that you are with us. Uh, we thank you that your sun shines down upon all people, uh, on the righteous and the unrighteous, as the Bible says. Uh, but in this day and age where we're so highly aware of prejudice, where we're so highly aware of, of, of racism, we are aware that your sun shines down upon all people of all colors, of all backgrounds, of all ethnicities. Uh, your sun, your rain uh, shine down upon people regardless of their situation and their circumstance. For you are present with all people. All people can hear the birds singing. All people can experience your grace. All people are made worthy by you, for you have made all people in your image. And so we thank you for this expansive grace that you give us, this inclusive grace that you give us. Thank you. Lord, in your mercy. And we approach you uh, in this COVID-19 time as we uh, begin to talk about reopening our societies, reopening our culture. Uh, as congregations are talking about how to best reopen worship services, we approach you for wisdom and for guidance. And as our culture is continuing to change and venturing into a new normal, a new normal that will not be like the old normal, we again ask you for wisdom. We seek your wisdom. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our friends and our family who are struggling at this time. Uh, we pray for those who are dealing with personal crises. We pray for those who are dealing with uh, health issues and physical challenges. We pray for them by now. Right now, we pray for them by name. Lord, in your mercy. And we pray for this issue of racism and prejudice that we're dealing with culturally. I thank you for this open conversation. I thank you that it would appear as though we're taking this seriously. I thank you that there is a desire for change. Uh, and so we pray that this would be meaningful, that out of this, systems would in fact change, uh, and that out of this, hearts would be transformed and that we would deal with all people, black, indigenous, people of color, uh, of all hues and varieties, as it were, uh, that we would deal with people uh, from changed hearts, from places of transformed hearts, recognizing that all humanity has you in common. So I pray, that, dear God, that this would go well. We pray this in your name, Lord, in your mercy. And we bring other concerns to you as well. We continue to pray for our first responders. And we thank you that COVID-19 uh, appears to be uh, well handled in Canada right now. I thank you that the case count is going down uh, and that we're making good progress here. I pray that it would last. Uh, I pray that we would pick, put steps into place so that there is not a second wave uh, later on in the fall. We pray this in your name, Lord, in your mercy. And we pray together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the power, the kingdom, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Have a great day. God bless.